25-year-old Ethan Belcher was tortured and murdered by his mom, Valeria Lynn Hamilton, 27, and stepfather, Shane Robert Shelton, 27. His three-year-old little brother was also abused, but fortunately, he survived at the hands of these evil monsters. Come join me in the murder she shed for this breaking story. My name is Holly. Viewer discretion is advised since this does involve children. Officers were called at 1.07 p.m. Sunday, January 22nd to a home in the 14600 block of Spring Garden Street, which is in the area of Seven Mile Road and Chambers Street on Detroit's east side. When they arrived, police saw five-year-old Ethan Belcher being taken to an EMS truck. He was brought to a nearby hospital and pronounced dead. His three-year-old brother was found at another location with bruises on his head and face and was also taken to the hospital. The aunt of the boys, whose name is Ashley Belcher, has made several reports to CPS in the past for bruises and burns that she has seen on the boys and called the couple's residence a house of terror. Several other individuals have reported them too, but mom Valeria and stepfather Shane were sent to take classes and the boys were given right back to them. Ethan had bruises in the shape of loops on his little body and multiple abrasions indicating an object like a cord was used to make the marks. Ethan had gangrene on one of his toes which was rotting and black. Shane and Valeria beat them and made them stay in the basement of the house which was filled with sewage water and feces which is most likely how Ethan's toe developed gangrene, but there is a mention that he did suffer from frostbite in the past, so that could have led up to the gangrene too. He may have gotten a cut and then it become infected. Either way, somehow he got gangrene because he received no treatment for his little toe. Can you imagine how painful that would have been? I can't even imagine for this little boy to suffer through his toe rotting like that. I mean, once it rotted, I'm sure it didn't have any feeling, but before that, it would have been really, really painful. Poor little boy. The prosecutor described the residence they lived in as somewhere between an abandoned home and a construction site. He said calling the house a home was being generous. Here are the pictures of that house of terror, and it looks like it would be such a cold and dreary place to live with exposed plywood walls and boards over some of the windows. Text messages sent between the couple. Shane called the kids mother effers and told Valeria to beat the dog shit out of that effer. In one text, Valeria said she would slam their kids so hard their heads will pop off. Ethan and his brother were physically beaten for years and were constantly covered in bruises and cigarette burns. They were also in and out of the hospital at times. Ethan was said to have over a hundred cigarette burns on his little body. When Aunt Ashley reported the abuse last year, Ethan had bruises from head to toe. His head was all lumped up. His eye was almost split open. The bruises were so bad on his bottom that he couldn't even sit down. Ashley wanted to take both Ethan and his three-year-old brother in, but she was told that the Child Protection Agency wanted to keep the two together, and she wasn't biologically related to the younger boy. Ashley does now have custody of Ethan's older brother, who is six years old. I mean, he didn't even have a chance to have a good life. I wanted to give him a good life. This baby suffered some very severe abuse through his life and i tried to report it last year i have the i had pictures i took them to the hospital myself detroit police chief said it was the worst abuse case he has ever seen and he was not sensationalizing it he said there are details about this case that i will never forget and i know our officers won't forget and it's just horrible Police were told about problems long before Ethan's death in Detroit. An investigation was conducted and a warrant request was sent to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office for review. Unfortunately, the warrant was denied. The Prosecutor's Office, however, said the warrant was returned back to the police 
for more work but never resubmitted. So basically they're blaming it on each other. So no one wants to take responsibility of how they screwed up with this little boy. So they're blaming it back and forth. Now Ethan has lost his life because of failure to do paperwork. Well, I got on Valeria's Facebook and here is a post. And well, I couldn't say it better than Valeria says it. She is describing herself and her significant not other in this post. It looks like Shane possibly had three little girls before getting with Valeria and Valeria had three boys. Valeria and Shane have been charged with one count of felony murder, two counts of first degree child abuse, one count of torture, and one count of conspiracy to commit torture. Both of the accused are currently behind bars without bond. They're due back in court next month. There is a GoFundMe account set up for Ashley Belcher to help pay for Ethan's funeral and provide clothing for the older brother that's living with her now because he was brought to her with only the clothing on his back. I will put the link below in case you feel the need to donate. So far, there is not a lot of information that has come out about this case, but the prosecutor has stated that the alleged facts in this case are extremely alarming. The evidence will come out in court, he said. In other words, there is a lot we don't know about this case yet and what was done to these little children. During her arraignment, Valeria cried and shook her head. Probably just crying for herself, I'm assuming. Wasn't because she cared. Because if she cared, that little boy wouldn't be dead right now. Ashley described Ethan as a happy, loving, and energetic five-year-old. For legal purposes, I need to say that these are only allegations at this point. This is a horrible case of more little children that were abused by evil parents. It's just horrible. I, my mind just can't wrap around the evil of this. I just can't imagine doing this to a child. It's just horrible. I'd also like to update you on the Athena Brownfield case. So the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation has officially confirmed the remains found in Grady County are those of Athena Brownfield, just in case you have not heard yet. If you are not familiar with this case of Athena, you can go check out a past video I have on my channel, Murder She Shit. Athena's obituary said that she loved to color and baby shark. Her favorite color was purple and she loved playing dress up. There has been far too many cases of child abuse lately and it's not someone else's problem or a neighborhood's problem. It is our problem. All of us need to work together to stand up for these little children. Please, if you suspect, report. Don't stand by and do nothing. We have to work together to fight for our children. Little children and animals are defenseless and both need our help in order to keep them safe. All right, guys, this was just a quick little video. As soon as I hear more about this case, I will let y'all know. Anyway, guys, I love y'all, and if you would like to hear more from the Murder She Shed and you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and come back and visit me. This Southern girl would love to have you. I love my subscribers, and I thank you for always being there for me. Bye.